As I lay down in my bed, I think of your goodness, all the things that you have said, have said, things that you promised, you never strayed, never strayed away from your word that is why I say Good morning. Then let's uh, greet each other. Let's greet each other. Uh -oh, that's our first announcement. Didn't know that I was going to pop up that quick, but it's there. So I guess we'll start, right? I guess we'll start with some announcements. It's good to be with you all this morning. Come on in, like, share, tag, invite, all that good stuff. Come on in, come on in. Y'all see that there? That is our retreat graphic. He restores my soul. I hope you guys are preparing to uh, be with us. Al, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Monica, hey there. Um, and so uh, he restores my soul. We are um, hosting, uh, this is our third time. So this is our annual retreat. We are hosting it. It will be at the uh, I think the Double Tree and Raleigh, the Crab Tree, right by the Crab Tree Mall, with all those wonderful restaurants. Um, so uh, the first two years um, have been wonderful. The first two years have been wonderful, and so looking forward for you to meet us there. Meet us there again. Um, uh, my alarm. I have about eight alarms uh, to make sure I wake up for the Harfin Bowl. Um, you know, so uh, want 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 everyone to be there. Crabtree Mall. Uh, this is our third year. You are really missing. Um, um, yes, for the food, exactly. Yeah. Um, you are you are missing a wonderful time together, and so looking forward to. Um, seeing you there for um, for the retreat. 
Looking forward to seeing you there for the treat. He restores my soul. The I'm going to put this in here. Uh, I put it in at the, the uh, last few days, I believe. And so, and I, and I think I'm doing this right. This is, so I just put it in the chat. I just put, that is the link uh, for registration, retreat registration. Um, and uh, so if you, we, I want to see you there. It's a lot of y'all that come here, but I want to see a lot of y'all there as well. Um, so after the uh, tax or whatever have you, the fee for the registration is about $65.71 or something like that. Bring somebody with you. Hey, there, someone. Um, so I want to see you there. Listen, tonight, y'all, tonight, 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 we've got Journey Through Scripture Bible Study. Um, it is interactive. You go on, you put your, put your camera on, bring your plate of food, bring, bring your, bring your water, um, whatever, bring, and bring your Bible, bring your Bible and bring, and bring your heart and bring your desire to learn more about Jesus. And so we want everybody to be a part of, of Bible study, of Bible study. Um, too often, I think Bible studies are like, are like small sermons where, you just kind of just sitting there and watching somebody kind of just teach or preach or whatever have you. And, and it's not interactive, but we want to be interactive. That's what we want to do. We want to be interactive. And so we want you to bring your questions um, for Bible study. That's Thursdays. That's tonight. I'm sorry, Tuesdays tonight, 7.30 p.m. 7.30 p.m. for Journey Through Scripture Bible Study. Listen, if you've been there and it's been about uh, close to 30 of us every every night. Um, why don't you invite somebody? Tell someone else about it. Tell someone else about it. How we're walking through the Bible. All right. And then last but not least, brothers, 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 if you have been missing this, I am sorry to tell you, you have been missing an absolutely wonderful time. You have really been missing an absolutely wonderful time at the Watchmen's Gathering. This is our men's group. Um, I want you to invite people. Listen, no pressure for people to talk. We understand how men can be. They they can be um they can be uh really, really reserved at first before they kind of jump in, kind of sharing their hearts and stuff like that. But this is a safe place, a safe place, uh, a, a confidential space. Um, but it is a strong community um that that that's gonna help grow men and make us men of God. And make us stronger, right? And make us wiser, right? Get, make make sure we have the character that we need and the integrity that we need to be men of God. Men of God. They don't have to be saved to come, uh, but we are. We are saved, and therefore we will be teaching from the Bible. We will be teaching. We're not going to beat nobody over the head with the Bible, but we are going to tell the truth, and the truth that is in Scripture. And so, um, I think that's that. And so want everyone to uh, want everyone to uh, invite, invite men, invite the men in your lives. And we're going to have a good time. We're going to have another good time. Uh, our friend has, has, is, is leading our Bible study um, and I'm her backup. And, uh, and Jeff has been leading uh, our men's ministry and um, I'm his backup's backup. That's who I am. I'm his backups back up. And they have been doing an absolutely awesome job. Um, and it's and it's and, and it's 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 good. It's good for me to just, you know, good leaders make sure that other people lead and they don't lead everything. And so uh, I'm trying to be a good leader and um and they're doing a great job. So uh, let's get to it. Let's get to it really quickly. I, I uh don't don't have much. I know I say that every week. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to be on point this week. Let's pray together. Um, Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. Lord, we repent of our sins, and we ask that you would forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, as we forgive those who have sinned against us, help us, Lord Jesus, as we go through Lent. Lord, uh, uh, those of us who are who are observing Lent, those of us who are observing Lent, um, help us. Lord Jesus, um, as we uh, seek to continue to get closer to you, as we are deliberate in getting closer to you, Lord Jesus, during our fast time, during our devotional time, 
Lord Jesus, may we continuously, continuously um, be reminded of why we are doing what we are doing. In your name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Me. Okay, we are in Lent and some of us are fasting. Um, I don't know uh, if everyone is, but uh, how you doing, Robert? Uh, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, I don't know if this is your first time here um, or if I, it's the first time me seeing you, but if so, welcome. Um, um, and hopefully you keep coming. Hopefully you keep coming. Um, so I wanted to, 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 to talk this morning about the Holy Spirit. I, I, I want, well, bless you, sir, man. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, hopefully I don't disappoint you. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit, uh, particularly during this Lent time. And we know the Holy Spirit has got um, um, tons and tons and tons of roles, right? And um, the Holy Spirit, get just we can make this a little interactive today, right? Uh, what is some of the roles of the Holy Spirit? What What are some of the roles of the Holy Spirit? Give me there, 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 there's about seven. There are there, 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 there are more than seven. But let's just just throw out some roles of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's all welcome, Robert. It's all welcome, Robert. Because I have some. I have some right here. Uh to teach. Yep. To comforter. Yep. To guidance. Yep. Oh, there we'll go with the thumbs up. Right? The Holy Spirit guides. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, T. Yep, yep, yep. Comforter, yep. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Good way maker. Yes, yes. Comforter. Yep, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. What else? What else? Do we have anything else? Do we have anything else? Anyone else have anything to say? Okay. Okay. Provide. Yeah, okay. Okay. To reveal, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Counselor, yes. Discernment, yes, 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 yes. Yes, intercedes, yes, yes. Oh, convict, yes, 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 yes. That's good, that's good. I want to talk about um, protector, mm -hmm. he corrects, yep, yep. Assist with us leading, yes, yep, yep, there we go. Absolutely, assist with leading us into the presence of God. Yes, all those, all those are correct. And so when we talk about during Lent, right? And when we talk about during Lent, so the, some of these I, I wrote down, right? Um, um, some, some of those I wrote down, but I wanted to, I wanted this to get a broad understanding of this is what the role, this is some of the roles of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, Jesus said, let's go to Acts chapter, um, Acts chapter one. Let's go with what Jesus said. Let's go what Jesus said. What did Jesus say about Acts chapter 1? Acts chapter 1, verse 4. I am not reading from the Amplified Bible today. I'm reading from the CSB Bible, from my preaching Bible, my favorite one. Um, this is my favorite Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 1. He said, uh, verse starts at verse 4, I think verse 4 through 8. And it says, while he was with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem. Not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father's promise. Wait for the Father's promise. The Holy Spirit is the Father's promise, which he said, you have heard me speak about for John the Baptist baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom of Israel at this time? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is God's promise. As we're going through Lent, 
and we are reflecting, we're reflecting on the sacrifice of God, right? But we should be trying to get closer to God ourselves. We should be trying to intertwine our heart more deeply with Christ, right? With the spirit of the living God, right? So we can be a better representation of who he is in the earth for ourselves. Right, so we can live a life that's pleasing to him. Now, here's the reality when it comes to a fast. Here's the reality when it comes to a fast, when it comes to Lent, not just a fast, when it comes to Lent. Lent should be a surgical procedure on our bodies, on our spiritual bodies. Lent should, Lent should be a surgical procedure for our spiritual bodies for our hearts. Lent should be, it, during Lent, we should be able, we should allow the Holy Spirit to identify things in us that needs, there is no way in being closer to Jesus without being corrected by the Holy Spirit. There is no way of being closer to Jesus without being led by the Holy Spirit. We'll be praying for you, Summer. Let's make sure we put Summer on a prayer list. She says she's having her, her uh, first ever surgery in a few hours. So Summer Jordan, S-O-M-E-R, y'all. Y'all write that down, team. So we can put that on our list in our chat. We should, we should allow the Holy Spirit to dig deep. We don't get to intertwine ourselves with Christ more deeply without an excavation process of our own lives. Without some things being dug up and thrown away. And so when you talk about the, the strength you need to simply, when we're talking about the giving up of food from a fast, that pain that you feel, that hunger that you feel, that deep, 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 deep need for, because your body is so reacting to the need of food. That is a physical reaction to a spiritual battle. When you really get hungry, that is a spirit, that is a physical reaction to a spiritual battle. That's what that is. And so that's why it's important that when we get in those moments, right, that we just don't go running for food. We've got to put up some kind of fight to the thing that's really trying to take our spirit down. And that's the way we need to look at it. And so when when we, that's when we need to call on the Holy Spirit as, as, um, as comforter, right? Let's read some of these things. That's when we need to, Call, call on the Holy Spirit as to as 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 provider, right? Uh, as the way maker, right? That's when we need the Holy Spirit to 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 guide us, right? That's where we need the Holy Spirit to do all of those things. The Holy Spirit is like a medical examiner. A medical examiner, when they, the reason why they send medical, medical examiners just don't do autopsies on bodies. They just don't do autopsies on bodies to confirm why, why people have passed away. But medical examiners go to crime scenes. They go, whether it's a crime scene, they go to where the body is. The job of the medical examiner, when it goes to, let's say, a crime scene or to someone or to someone where someone has or to a place where someone has passed away is the medical examiner has the ability to, dis, to determine a time of death. It is able to look at the body and, and examine the body right in that space and give a general time of death. It can tell you, it can tell you, um, uh, uh, th this body's been here for X amount of hours. I can tell by the way the body, 
whether rigor has set in. I can tell because the body is this temperature. I can tell all these different things. The medical examiner's job also can determine how deep a wound is, how shallow a wound is, what a fatal wound was, right? This is, this right here, this is the job of a medical examiner. We, the Holy Spirit, should be a medical examiner for our, for our hearts, for our lives. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Particularly during Lent, when we're examining ourselves when we're reflecting on the, the sacrifice of Jesus, that, that, that during this particular fast, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to be an M.E. for our lives. Why? Because we all have wounds. And when we come to Jesus, we come to Jesus wounded. When we get saved, it, it doesn't mean wounds go away. We have to continue to live a life that's pleasing to Jesus. We have to continue to live a life that's pleasing to Jesus. And so in order to live a life that's pleasing to Jesus, when we're going through Lent, and so we, we, we're already saved, we've already given our lives to Christ, right? We've already done that. We, 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 but now it just because we've given our lives to Christ doesn't mean we are woundless. No, that just means we, we allow the Holy Spirit to address our wounds and dress our wounds. This is what we should be doing. We should be allowing the Holy Spirit to not just simply address our wounds, but to dress, dress the wound. But the problem that we have too often as, as, as I'll use this term uh, loosely Christians, right? To just put a, you know, you know, I prefer follower of Jesus, but I don't want to throw everybody else out. Um, but one of the problems that we have as Christians is wounds, wounds, become pedestals for us. Wounds become crutches for us. Wounds become motivation for us. And so instead of being healed, we would like to retain the wound because it's the wound that props me up. It's the wound that keeps me going. It's the wound that motivates me. To do what God has called me to do. It's the wound. It's not the spirit. It's the wound. So I don't really want to get rid of the wound. And so like when you skin your knee or you skin your elbow when you were a kid and it was bleeding and then it scabs up, we need to have that scab. What do most people do when that scab comes? They peel a scab off, which means it really, you're really starting part of the process all over again. And, and too often as followers of Christ, we, when we have these wounds and the Holy Spirit has, 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 has addressed the wound. Addressed by, I mean, identified it, made you aware. You know what happened, but got deep down with you to address the wound, to address the issue and to deal with the issue. And then he dresses the wound that begins to bring healing to it. It begins to bring healing to it. We pick off the scab and we got to start the healing process over again. So while we, so now we have the information of why we're wounded. We have the information of how it impacted us, but we don't want the healing that comes with it. During Lent, you must allow the Holy Spirit to not just address your wounds, to address your heart issues, to address your shortcomings, to address the sin that so easily besets you. To, uh, to Don't allow them to just simply do that, but we must allow the Holy Spirit to dress the wound, to heal us of these things, because we don't get the opportunity to hold on to the wound and be closer to Jesus. You do not have the ability 
to hold on to your wound and be closer to Jesus. You don't have it. You don't have that ability. You don't, you, you don't get to, you don't get to have Jesus in your life. We don't get to have Christ in our lives, but have crutches as well in the spirit. Other things that we lean on to motivate us. If Jesus isn't enough to motivate you, if you if you need the mo if you need to be motivated by what hurt you, then you can't be close to who will heal you. It doesn't work like that. It don't work like that. I'll say it again. If you need to be motivated by what hurt you, then you cannot have a deeper relationship with the one who will heal you. Because Jesus does not keep you, does not keep you wounded. Jesus makes you whole. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus doesn't keep you wounded. Jesus makes you whole. Everybody, it's always, huh? oh, I'm going to show them. You're going to show who? For what? Why? They didn't think I could do it. So what? Who cares? Who told you you can, though? Why do you know that you can do it? You know that you can do it because you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he has anointed you, and he has touched you, and he and he has equipped you, and he has enabled you. He's done all of these things. Who cares about who said what you could not do? It doesn't matter about what who said. It doesn't matter about the haters that you have. Everything that God is should motivate you to get closer to him. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's got to be done. I'm telling you, I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm saying that it's got to be done. So so that, that, that painful procedure, that open heart surgery, we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to do an open heart surgery during Lent as we attempt to get closer to Jesus. The reality is that there is a sacrifice. There is a cost of being closer to God. There is a cost to being closer to Jesus. Now, while Jesus, while, while, while Holy Spirit is all of those things, I want to focus on the one. I want to focus on the one thing during Lent. The main thing. The main thing during Lent, the main role of the Holy Spirit during Lent as it, as it pertains spe uh, specifically to the fasting portion of it, right? The main role of the Holy Spirit is to convict. We should be convicted by sin. We should be convicted. But the problem that we have, the problem that too many of us have, is we like to be picky and choosy. And, you've, and we've got to understand something. We remain wounded, y'all. We remain wounded when we accept the Holy Spirit as comforter, but reject him as the convictor. That's how we stay wounded. When we, when we receive him as comforter, when we receive him as teacher, when we receive, and we're fooling ourselves really into thinking, we're, we're fooling ourselves into thinking that we, re, that we are allowing him to lead us. When we accept him in all these other ways, but we reject him as convictor of sin. I'm here to tell you, most people won't say this. If the Holy Spirit can never convict you as sin, you do not have the Holy Spirit living in you. That may sound like a harsh statement to some, but it is what it is. If the Holy Spirit does not have the ability to convict you, you do not have the Holy Spirit. It, it is impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. 
impossible. And so we we and and this here's, here's what we got to understand when we reject when we reject the Holy Spirit when when we receive Him as Comforter when we receive the Holy Spirit as Comforter but we reject Him as Convictor then we validate Satan as an enabler. We, we, we enable Satan as, as, as the accuser. He is the accuser of the brethren. Right? He, if, if Satan is the accuser of the brethren, when we reject the Holy Spirit as, when we receive the Holy Spirit as comforter, but reject him as convictor, then we give Satan success as an as the accuser. And we and we become an enabler to Satan. Ooh. I'm gonna say it another way. I'm gonna say it another way. When we receive the Holy Spirit as comforter, as teacher, as all these different things but we reject him as the convictor of sin, then we become a co-conspirator with Satan on our own lives. And so Lent, 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 it's, it's yes, 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 yes. Our bodies should look different after Lent. We should have lost some weight after Lent. But 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 Lord knows this that we we should we should be in a after Lent we should be in post op we should we should be in post op we should allow we we should have allowed the Holy Spirit to 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 take that scalpel to our hearts and to our lives. I'm not saying that it's gonna be easy. I'm saying that it's got to be done. I'm not saying that it's gonna be easy. I'm saying that it's got to be done. But we have got to we have got to allow the Holy Spirit to get into the deepest. We have got to allow the convictor. We have got to allow the convictor to have free reign on our hearts during Lent. To have free reign on our lives during Lent. We have got to allow the convictor. The convictor now takes precedent during Lent. Yes, yes. You know what? Because after he's finished with the surgery, he'll turn around and become the comforter again. He'll turn around and become the comforter again. He'll be the comforter again. But you, but you, but you don't get to lead yourself. See, when you reject him, oh, and, and, and what we've really got to understand is when we reject him as convictor, we don't even get to receive him fully as every other thing that we want him to be. He is not going to lead you if he can't convict you. He 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 won't, he won't, he won't, he won't. He won't there may be moments, but you won't get the full comforter if he if he can't convict you. He surely won't lead you if he can't convict you. You got to be all in during Lent. You got to be all in during Lent. Oh, listen, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was helping myself yesterday when I was in the car. I was driving and I was thinking about this. I said, Lord, please don't let me forget this. I said, please don't let me forget this. It takes a mature Christian to allow the Holy Spirit to, 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 to be a convictor. It takes a mature Christian to allow the Holy Spirit to do the work that it needs to do inside of us. We got a whole lot of stuff. We got a whole lot of stuff. We 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 got a whole lot of when when you go to get surgery, what happens before you get surgery? They bring you in that back room, they 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 put you where they need to put you, you sign some forms, then you go to the back. And before they give you that anesthesia. They they make you sign another form. It's a it's a consent form. And during Lent, we must we must give the Holy Spirit consent to convict. 
we should allow, we, we, we in our lives as followers of Jesus, the convictor needs to lead the way. Because if you can convict me, you can order my steps. When, when, when I'm convicted, it, my conviction brings me to repentance. My repentance, right? My, the conviction leads me to repentance and repentance leads me to a closer relationship with Jesus. And the closer relationship with Jesus leads to my ears being able to hear God, to my eyes being able to see God, to my heart being able to know when the presence of God is in my space. But it all starts with conviction. When we pray and we come together for the harp and bowl, I always say repentance, a, rep a prayer of repentance, a needing for forgiveness, because I do not dare assume that I'm entitled to the presence of God. I'm not entitled to the presence of God. On Sunday mornings, when we do the harp and bowl, I do the harp and bowl, I'm listening to worship. We, we I pray for repentance on the harp and bowl. I'm doing worship music. When I get to church, I go right to the altar and I pray and I repent again because I do not assume that I do not assume that I am entitled to the presence of God. I'm not entitled to the presence of God. I know my life's been filthy. So and, and I, I know what my life has been. And so I repent, I repent and I repent and I thank him. I repent of conviction leads to repentance. Repentance leads to thanks. To thanksgiving. During this Lent, I'm done. During this Lent time. During this Lent time. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict. Don't just allow him to comfort lead and guide and teach and help with discernment and do all those wonderful things that are beneficial to us and that feel good. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict you so you can be a better you for Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit Allow the Holy Spirit to do the, the necessary surgery that would draw you closer to God. Allow him. Spring is right around the corner. Allow him to do the spring cleaning of your spiritual life. So you can really have a relationship a relationship that God determines. We can talk about that another time. About whose standards that we follow. Allow him, allow him to convict. You. So you can ultimately be closer to Christ. Because that's what we all want. That should be the goal. Not what we do, just the relationship. Having that right relationship with Jesus. Amen. 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 I might have to turn this into a whole sermon. Points. I got some points here. I got some points here. So I might have to take some time and get into this. A little more. A little more. I hope you're blessed today. I hope you're blessed every day. I hope you're blessed by prayer. We have prayer tonight. We have prayer tonight. Um, I want to just quickly uh, remind you also tonight, we've got Journey Through Scripture Bible Study. I want to see you there. I want to see you there. Amen. I want to see you there. I want to see you there. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Wonderful day. Amen. Wonderful day. Listen, I'll end with this. Get back up. I don't know who this is for. Get back up. I don't care how often. 
get men. Now, often you fall. Get men. The reason why you are feeling as bad as you are is because the Holy Spirit is convicting you. The Holy Spirit is convicting you. So no, it's not okay to sin and do all of that stuff. But if you find yourself in that space and in that place, get back up. Get back up. And that's conviction. That feeling that that is conviction. Get up. Repent. And come back to Jesus. And start up and, and start right. Start where you fell off. Start right there and go on with God. Go on with God. Get back. Amen. Love y'all. The Lord bless you, cover you, keep you, shield you, and protect you from everything and anything that is unlike God in the natural and in the spirit today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. See y'all tonight at prayer. Eight o'clock. Thank you.